The holiday season. This is where people gain body fat. I've gained 45 pounds in a week. Their fitness tends to go down and they just generally go backwards. You don't have to. In fact, in today's episode, we're going to talk to, to you about how you can work out during the holiday season, maintain your gains, maybe even get in better shape, and connect with your family. Drop the gym for the holidays. Yeah. Hey, hey. Yeah, I know. <laughs> this is so I think we should first off um, set the set the stage here of the real value of the holidays. I think a lot of fitness fanatics fear the holidays, right? Because yeah. they're like, oh my God, uh, so it's panic going into it. I'm not gonna work out, I gotta eat, I'm gonna eat all this food and what's I, gonna okay, happen. Okay, actually, I don't know if you guys have noticed this. So we've been saying the same message every year for eight years yeah. now, mm -hmm. okay, every about like the importance of connecting with family. Also, I actually have seen a huge shift in our space. Haven't you? People talking about Oh, yeah. Stuff? Yeah, that's good. No, I've seen more and more fitness influencers post stuff like, this is the time that you're not supposed to, yeah. like, never did you hear that shit. Say, five no. plus years ago, no. I never heard anybody talking about that. I'm glad like that. that's the message. Good. It was always about, I like, haven't seen it, how do we good. figure this out? Like, how yeah. do we, you know, get your workout in here, do this, and yeah. time this? It was always, like, all these yeah. things to to try and minimize the, the body fat. No, and, I mean, look, this is not a message that is new uh, that we haven't shared. It's, and, and forget holidays. Uh, your workouts should improve the quality of your life, period, end of story. So, and now your life will change. Sometimes that means you're in a lot of stress. Other times it means you're not. Sometimes it means, well, every year it means you're going to be holidays. And so you're going to have different challenges. How can you work out in ways to make the holidays even better? Not how can you work out uh, because the holidays suck and you need to escape or you need to burn off the calories or whatever, right? There are ways you can work out to make the holidays even better. Of course, one of the biggest benefits of the holidays is connecting with family. Um, so that's really important. The, so let's the, bring them in. And there are health benefits to connecting with family. There's mm -hmm. health benefits to uh, being around people that you love and enjoy. Um, so we should talk about how to use exercise as a way to make the holidays more enjoyable. And then, of course, is the part everybody wants to know, how to minimize right the potential damage of the holidays, of the, the, the food that you eat, maybe the fact that your gym is closed, you're not going to go to the gym, maybe you're traveling. Um, so let's, let's talk a little bit about those. I, I also think that one, one of the, the best strategies for dealing with the holidays, it reminds me of like, uh, when I would talk to somebody who, who wants to like get in good shape for a competition is the real work is done heading into it Yeah, mm -hmm. is before it's like the last thing you want to try and do, like come holiday season is like, Oh, let me figure this out. And I need to start losing 30 pounds right now. That's a really I lose 10 pounds over the Christmas. Holiday yeah. Season, yeah. So honestly, like the the more consistency that you have built leading into it, the easier this is going to be and the less stressful it'll be to where you don't have to worry too much and you can focus primarily on family. Yeah, now the, the big thing is if you look at all the <coughs> potential challenges with your workouts and the holidays, um, the, the most important thing to consider is consistency because mm -hmm. this is where people tend to miss workouts for whatever reason, right? They, they're traveling or family is visiting, or maybe their gym is closed um, or, you know, for whatever reason, they're just, they're missing workouts. Consistency, when you're talking in the context of appropriate workouts, of course, consistency trumps everything. Consistency trumps intensity. It trumps frequency. The, if you had two people uh, who were identical in all respects and you, you looked at their progress over the course of four years or five years, the person who was consistent within, again, the context of appropriate workouts is going to do better than the person who isn't consistent, even if the non-consistent person has a superior workout or trains harder. This is still true for the holidays. So uh, I think that's the number one thing to focus on is how can I stay consistent? And I think the biggest factor that contributes to inconsistency of the holidays is accessibility. Mm -hmm. The fact that you're, uh, you might not have access to equipment or a gym or the typical stuff that you use uh, to work out. So the, one of the big things to consider is how do I work out anywhere? How do I work out at home? How do I work out at my aunt's house when I'm going to visit her? Right. How do I have a good workout without <coughs> any equipment whatsoever? I think this is a very important consideration. And the reason why you need to consider is you need to plan for it. What you don't want to do is go into it and be like, oh, no gym. I guess I'll just do a bunch of random body weight exercises. Programming makes a big difference here as well. So- yeah, and it's it's one of those things that a lot of times it's unclear, and so you have to be able to build in like flexibility. And to to do that, um, you're gonna have to realize that your normal routine and schedule and all that, like it's it's not gonna look the same. So 
how can we account for that and how can we have sort of uh, backup plans and, and different options available? And so a lot of times too, like you have to look outside of just like my routine is I drive to the gym at this time and then, you know, mm -hmm. and I'm able to use all the equipment and come back and, you know, maybe I don't have access to that. Now I have to have something available for me exactly where I am. I just go downstairs and use it or I don't need any equipment. I just use my body weight. This reminds me a lot about how I communicate to clients and friends on how do I utilize things like hit training or supersetting, like instead of like programming it into my normal routine, I allow life to happen. And then when those times present themselves where it's advantageous to train that way, I just do. And what's great is it interrupts my normal training and it's a novel stimulus. And so I get now the added benefits of, oh, my body's not used to this. The same thing goes for holidays. Uh, very consistently, I'm a gym lifter, a barbell, dumbbell lifting either at my house or inside here or at a gym. That's consistently how I train. I rarely ever do you know, body weight stuff, suspension trainer type stuff. And so it's like, oh, this is great. Here I am going to be at home with my family. Some of the gyms are closed on certain days or I don't feel like going to the gym and, and leaving where family and friends are all at. So, oh, here's a great time to interrupt my normal training blocks with this suspension trainer, body weight type of routine. And now not only is it like gonna work out because it's easier and more convenient, but it's also a novel stimulus. So a lot of times I see great benefits from it. Not like it should go in my routine occasionally anyways. And so why not allow it when the holidays yeah, come Yeah, I always use uh, bands, a uh, suspension trainer, maybe a stick or a wall for isometrics. And, um, in my experience, when I've done this, which I've done this now for a while over holidays, especially if I'm or on vacations, when I travel, I'll do this. When I go back to my regular routine, to your point, Adam, I have, I don't, not only do I not go backwards, I actually notice benefits. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's like when we all went to Mexico, was it a few years ago, a couple of years ago, um, we brought bands and a suspension trainer and I did use them. I went outside and I used them for 30 minutes, you know, here and there. And, uh, you know, got a workout, got a pump type of deal. Nothing crazy, very different from my normal routine. When we came back, uh, I felt great. In fact, I felt like I, it was a much needed shift mm -hmm. in my workout because I used things that I don't normally use. Now, the value of things like a suspension trainer or resistance bands or, of course, your body is they're super convenient. Uh, you oh, could yeah. use them anywhere. You can go anywhere and use those <coughs> things. Suspension trainer, you can hang in a doorway, around a tree, around a metal pole, Bands, you, you don't need anything. You just you step on them or stand on them or use them anchored around a doorknob. And you've got basically access to almost any exercise for any body part. And you can still things. make it super challenging for yourself right. by, by going slow, like changing the tempo. I would hold um, certain positions for an excess amount of time uh, to really challenge my muscles still. But uh, and two, range of motion. So like in range strength, uh, in a lot of different angles, uh, that normally I wouldn't, I wouldn't connect with, I wouldn't incorporate those in my regular routine. It's like, I'm going to focus on that aspect. Uh, and then, like you said, you come back and you feel like you've addressed a hole that I had. You know, this is one of my favorite parts about what we did with any, we don't really actually talk or sell maps anywhere a lot like it's not like one of our go-to talk to talking points around it went crazy anywhere. during covid though huh? it did it, actually it was it was so funny it was probably one of our least sold programs uh heading in before covid and then when covid hit it became one of the number one selling programs that we did and one of the things i think that was that people found out after the fact uh was that i think there's this misconception that it's like this oh it's so basic it's just and i remember when we there's wrote no it, dumbbells no barbells yeah I, I remember when we wrote it we're like listen i don't want this to be a beginner only program i want someone who's really advanced to be able to say hey if i want to just do all body weight training for a while how would i see great yeah, i don't want it to we don't want it to be a second fiddle settle for this routine because you don't have a gym it's like yeah on its own it's yeah if i was going to do body weight yeah. how would i train body That's weight right. i'm not going to do something where i'm like oh my my client who's 65 and super deconditioned body weight type of training it's like i want to have things to where and that's where the the birth of the intensity uh, sessions came in there, where we actually have the ability to, and there's levels to like how how challenging you mean. So if you could be someone who's really, really advanced and you can make that <laughs> anywhere workout kick your ass, or you can be really regressed and you could take it all the way back to like very beginner-like and still challenge yourself too. That was like, I think one of the sweetest parts about that program. Yeah. 
Today's program giveaway, the Super Bundle. Happy holidays. That's a lot of programs. Here's how you can win it. Leave a comment below this video. The first 24 hours that we drop it, subscribe to this channel, turn on notifications. If you win, we'll let you know in the comment section. Also, this program, we're talking about workouts you could do at home. We have a bunch of programs where you just use your body weight or bands or suspension trainers and more. We put together an at-home holiday bundle. Maps Anywhere, Maps Suspension, Maps Prime, and the No BS six-pack formula. Four programs would retail for over $330 right now for this episode only. $99.99 gets you all of them. So if you're interested, go to mapsnovember.com. All right, here comes the show. For, you know, if you're working out this way with body weight bands or let's say suspension trainers, there's a couple ways you could break this up. You could do upper lower splits or what I like to do is just full body. I like to most days go out and do like a 30 minute kind of full body workout, hit the whole body. Um, and that, um, is not just enough. It's more than enough for me, at least to not just maintain my gains, but I actually notice, um, some pretty cool improvements. But the, the main key here is it allows you to be consistent. You don't need a gym. You don't need to go anywhere. You literally take them with you. They fit in like a tiny space, like a suspension trainer bands you could put in a, a small bag if you needed to. And now you have your gym going with you. Or if you have family visiting, you can't leave your house to work out. It's literally wake up 30 minutes earlier, do your workout with these things, and then you're you're all set. Another thing to consider, um, and this, this, you know, I, I know people are gonna attach to what I'm about to say from the for the fat loss. I don't do this for the fat loss. I do this for something that I always hate on the holidays, which is the post-meal lethargy, okay? Where you eat a big meal, you're with your family, Christmas dinner, Thanksgiving dinner, whatever. And then you're like, oh, like you want to fall asleep. You're so tired. Yeah. Of course, there's that stereotype of like Laying your dad and your uncle's on the couch yeah. falling asleep. And I hated that because <laughs> it took away from the time I could spend with my family. Now I would try to do it with diet and I would eat the protein first. That helps. Um, try not to overeat. But, you know, you've got all these delicious dishes. You know, my family, people bring things that are homemade that I only have an opportunity to eat during the holidays. Mm -hmm. And so I, I want to enjoy all of them. Even if I watch my portions, it's still going to be a lot more than I normally eat. But then you get that post meal crash where you're just, you're tired or irritable and you just don't feel good. And then what happens is you try to, without maybe realizing it, offset it by eating more. This is what two people tend to do. They'll eat more sugar to try and get themselves to feel better and they end up feeling terrible. Now this is because of the insulin uh, dump you get. And then the blood sugar rise and crash. In fact, uh, CGMs now are, are quite popular. You can put one on, see what happens to your body when you eat these meals, and you'll see this spike in blood sugar and then this crash. The crash is when we feel lethargic, when we feel like we need to take a nap. Now, I said earlier you could eat protein first, and that helps make a difference. But nothing, nothing makes a difference like a short, intense workout either before or after that meal. In fact, if you do a short, intense workout an hour before that meal, literally 10 to 15 minute yeah. hit style workout. That's my favorite. I like before. Yes. Ten, that's after. the best way to do it, yeah. right? Yeah. A 10 to 15 minute hit style workout 30 to 60 minutes before. Literally, you can go outside for 10, 15 minutes, come back inside. Nobody knows the difference besides the fact that you might be sweating a little bit. <laughs> Measure your blood sugar and it is profound the difference it makes on that. And that crash doesn't hit you nearly enough. Doing it afterwards also has a positive effect, although before seems to have more of an effect. I would this is a hack. I would prefer before. Yeah. I think just Yeah, cuz afterwards is rough, right? Yeah, and uh, and afterwards too, like and I know you, and in one of your points you'll get to this of like the kind of movement and just walking stuff like that. Like I loved like go, we started this tradition a long time ago is post meal Katrina and I would just start we would walk. Yes. And yes. it started off with just like her and I. Now everybody knows So much better for digestion. Yeah, and it just yes. feel it's easy, right? You just had a nice big meal with everybody. We're still connecting. Yeah, we're still let's go for a walk together and like every age group can handle that right like my my mother-in-law probably isn't going to do my hit style anywhere workout with <laughs> me or something like that but i can go for a walk with mm -hmm. her and everybody so it's like more of the family joins in on the walk afterwards which is fine you know it's better than nothing right and so i would prefer to do the the harder intense workout before the meal and then eat enjoy myself and then go walk afterwards yeah Everybody's so like here's what happens with that intense workout and i i've measured this with with <clears throat> cgms in fact uh, uh tom billiou when i went to be on a show I don't know, a few months ago he told me the same thing he said before the holidays i'll do a really hard leg workout in particular he said 
he said hit style leg workout and he goes and i'll measure my blood sugar and he goes and you know him he's like super yeah data guy yeah he's like yeah. very 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 big on the data very obsessed with it and he goes bro he goes it looks like a completely different person he's like one of them is this huge peak and crash and then the other one he goes my blood sugar doesn't he goes i'm eating pastries candies all the stuff that he normally doesn't even touch so his body should be hypersensitive he goes my blood sugar barely goes above where it normally would if i work out hard before the day up. What happens is it primes your body and your muscles to uptake and utilize that glucose to replenish itself. So you don't get this and your body becomes more sensitive to insulin. So you don't need as big of an insulin spike uh, to make this happen. So a HIIT style workout, I like for this because it's so short. High intensity interval training is a very good way to make this happen. Now you could do a traditional strength training workout an hour long, or again, you could do a 10 minute HIIT workout and then 45 minutes later, eat, and, and, and what you'll notice, and I've noticed this, is you don't get that post-meal crash. You actually feel okay afterwards, which is really cool. Add the walk with the family, yeah, and that's, like, the perfect— I mean, I wish we had, like, enough people to, like, wear the glucose monitors to, like, test this before and after, and, and like— it's I mean, remarkable. that was, I remember when we we talked about those, and, and I know there was, there was, like, a movement going around of, like, you know, fitness influencers that were trying to— counter and say how stupid they are it's like man if you can learn to connect the behaviors to yes how you because like i don't you know and some people are probably aware enough that they under, they realize like oh yeah I, I know like after i eat that big turkey meal all i want to do is just lay around and do nothing you know a part of that is also because the crash it isn't just because the turkey and yes. what's inside turkey and stuff like that it's also because you ate this huge meal you have this massive spike and you have this massive crash and so you want to lay around where if you can mitigate that through some habits with your either training or how you eat your protein first so that like you're more likely to stay active and do stuff like that. And you're less likely to put on a bunch more body fat. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, totally. All right. Um, here's another <coughs> thing that I think is really important uh, for the holiday season. I think, and this is all connected and some, someone might think I'm being woo here, but um, there is data to support this. And this is also through experience. You know, workouts can be very effective ways of putting yourself in your body and being present. Okay, what, where am I going with this? Well, when you're with family around the holidays, um, and, and as I've gotten older, I've realized that this is this is something that I would do. When there's a lot of people around or whatever, I tend to check out a little bit. I think I get a little anxious or whatever. There's people I don't know or I haven't seen for a while. And then afterwards, later on, I'm like, ah, oh, I didn't get that opportunity to sit down with that person and talk to that person. Wow, look at my nephew. He's so much older. And so I want to put myself in my body. All right, where does exercise come into play? Closed chain movements, in my opinion, are really good ways of putting yourself in your body. There's something different about moving a weight versus moving your body, right? So like mm -hmm. a chest press versus a push-up. I think when you're moving your body around space, it kind of forces you to be more in your body because it's your body that's moving, not just your hands mm -hmm. and your feet. This is why gymnasts uh, have such, one of the reasons why they have such incredible proprioception, right? Mm -hmm. They they know how to control their bodies in, in time and space, in space, and this makes them really good at doing other sports because that's what you need, to, typically. This is why coaches will recommend kids do gymnastics as a first sport. It puts them in their body. And most gymnastics movements are closed chain. So closed chain is you moving your body. It's a push-up versus a chest press yeah. or a body weight squat versus a leg press. That's what close chain and close like, chain does that. Yeah. And I feel like sometimes open chain movements, like you, you can get distracted by the weight itself and, and, um, trying to manipulate, um, your position to be able to account for how the weight yeah, is kind leverage. Of, yeah. The leverage. And so, um, a lot of the focus will go there or like the number of reps you're doing, you just kind of get in one of those rhythm, rhythmic, uh, situations with that versus the the closed chain, it really does place all of your effort, attention, like all your your nerves, like all of the um, the joints. Everything is like has to account for you bringing your body into that environment and situation. So it is it is a totally different feel, uh, which has its own benefits. I mean, I I've actually never thought of us like that, um, but I listening to both. Uh, make that point of course it makes you feel more in your body there's you you can't do a push-up a pull-up 
something where you're con- without feeling your entire body where you yeah. can do a lot of bench press dumbbell exercises where it's the difference between a pull up and a lat pull down yeah you, there's and and my legs are completely at rest when mm-hmm. i do a lat pull down there's my body my feet my exactly. legs my yeah. calves they're not feeling that that whereas if i'm in a push segment up, yourself everything from my toes to my fingertips i'm feeling i'm feeling everything in that movement so to add to that i like and this is something that i wanted to do this year that i don't think i've ever challenged myself to do is to like get rid of the phone, right? So the, the, obviously the idea of the, what you're selling right now is that, you know, doing these close chain moves to become more present, more in your body. Yes. Um, I also think uh, di- eliminating any sort of potential distractions uh, will only help that situation too. So if the desired outcome is, hey, you know what? Like I want to I want to practice being ultra present or uh, I mean, I want to be for our the kids and the younger ones. This, I want to be a good example. I don't want to be on my phone doing stuff all the time. Like, okay, one thing I can do is to do the the close chain type of exercises. The other thing is to get rid of my phone while I'm with my family. So they see me being ultra present and yeah, I'm well, ultra look, present. I, you know, um, it got pointed out to me a long time ago by a body work specialist. And she said, oh, I was teaching her how to bench press. She had some good natural strength, but she never really lifted. And in the bench press, you know, what do you teach when you're teaching someone how to really be strong? Ground your feet, drive your hips, squeeze your glutes, activate your lats. And she's like, man, you really have to work hard to put yourself in your body. And I said, huh? She goes, all the things you're telling me to do, if I do a push up, it just happens. Like if I do a push up, like everything's turned on. And I said, oh shit, okay, that's totally true. And she goes, you know, it's funny. She goes, when I work on people who strength train, I will tell them to do suspension trainer workouts because I can feel that they're more in their body. And that's when I started experimenting with suspension training. It's true. When you're doing a chest press or a fly or a body row, it's a, it's a different thing. Now I can be, because I'm well-trained, I can put myself in my body with traditional strength training exercises. But if you think about training clients, how much of your focus is on telling them, yeah. do this, do that, connect here. Whereas if you're doing a pull-up, you know, it's like, you don't need to say anything. As long as they're strong enough to do it right, mm-hmm. they're in their body. So closed chain movements are great for this. The suspension trainers are amazing for this. Yeah. And I love suspension trainers because you can change the angle to make it appropriate for a beginner yeah. or someone who's super advanced. Right, somebody who can't do a full pull up or even a push up and stuff like that, you can regress. Them. Or I can make it really hard. Like right. I can make a push up variation yeah. on it that it challenges. Re- it body. really stresses that stability issue too, the yes. core, and to make sure that you're um, really bracing properly because it isn't. It isn't like to your earlier point. It's like you can't just segment your body off. Like you have yeah. to use all of it. Has to like some of it has to just anchor and stay exactly where it is. Where the rat and that takes muscular contraction to do that yeah. instead of just letting it just hang. So yeah, and there's and there's overflow of this in the sense of the benefits. Like you train like this over a two week period because of the holidays. You go back to your traditional workout. Watch what happens. You'll notice a different connection and a different type of strength. Uh, partly because of the, no- the novelty of it, but also because you've been put in your body in a, in a different way. Um, the next thing, this one, this one I hacked a long time ago, and I, it's one of the best things that I think I've ever done around the holidays, and that is that I schedule workouts with family members around the holidays. Now, yes, these aren't like workouts when I'm on myself and I'm challenging myself and I'm being very selfish with what I'm working on. It's definitely more about connecting with the people with me But I love it because I'm the fitness expert, okay? Mm. I get to share something with family members. They value the fact that I work out all the time and that I'm a fitness expert. They want to come to the workout. And then we get to do this thing together. We get to talk, mess around. If it's with my cousins, there's a lot of shit talking. We'll do some exercise and we'll sit down and talk. And it's not, it's it's a workout, but it's actually more of a like visiting connection time that also is a workout right. than just a workout. It's like an event. It's really yeah. cool. So it's like, if you have fam- friends and family members who you, you'd be like, man, it would be really fun to ask aunt Susie to come with me for one of my workouts or, and you literally, I mean, it's what I would do. I would call them up and Hey, you want to show up 30 minutes early and we'll do like a band workout. And I've never had a no. Every yeah. family member I think probably because I've been doing this for so long as a career, they're like excited to do it. And then it's with me. It's me, three other people. We're doing this 10, 15 minute workout. I get to share this thing with them. I also get to get a workout and it's very connecting. It's a lot of fun. I've, I've been working on that because I I remember you've talked about that quite a bit and like just kind of slowly introducing some of my family, some of Courtney's family and 
Uh, it's interesting. It's always the unconventional tools that capture their attention yes. right away. And so I was like, half the time I'm taking them through like some some club swings and Indian clubs or like showing them the mace bell and all that and then get letting them try and kind of stabilize and do real basic things. But it's just like kind of sparks interest, which is always cool. Oh, I, sure. I mean, I've actually attended this with Sal's family before and I love it. Like it's something that my family is trying to adopt and we've tried to emulate a little bit of it. It, what I was thinking about that I liked was actually, it, it was like two and a half, three hours we were here. Yeah. And it, we only did probably an hour worth of working out in, in that three hour, but that's what it was. It was like, you know, guys were hooking up, you know, dumbbells to their waist and doing max pull up to see what they could do. And everybody was, you know, pushing the sled. How heavy could we push the sled? And like, so it turns into this like cool, fun, like co mostly conversation and bonding with the family mixed in with some movement and exercise. And it's stretched out over three hours where we're not sitting and doing chips and dip and watching TV. And so I it can only imagine how beneficial that is. And I think like, okay, if we have this luxury, we have this gym, right? So we have that, that privilege of, of having something like that. I think if I didn't have that, I'd probably grab a suspension trainer, maybe a mace bell, maybe a kettle bell, Some one bands, or two heavy yeah. band, uh, bands. I love the sled though. Yeah, yeah a couple like to tools. And then just do some like uh, fun challenges yeah. with it. You know, like what stuff can you do on the suspension trainer? That's really challenging that we could all take turns doing. Then can we lift this in a circus press overhead or a bottoms up kettlebell press or swing the mace or push the drag, the sled. Like, I mean, you really, this is an, an area where, and of course I know we have programs for all this stuff like that, but the, I would suggest that people have fun with it, be loose about it to get, and it's more about connecting with the family and engaging with them. So take a handful of these tools that are easy to lug from anywhere, right? Like you can literally ban suspension trainer, one kettlebell or a dumbbell yeah, or something. Take and them like, anywhere. Yeah. Take that anywhere. You go to a park, you can do it somewhere at your house and just make it into a thing where you guys are doing some fun challenges. You know, it was a surprise from this. When I first did it, I'll be very honest right here on the podcast. It was really a way for me to get my workout in. And not be a jerk and not hang out with my family. So I'm like, yeah. how can I do both? Oh, I know. I'll invite them. Yeah. It turned out to be so fun that I value that I value. It's one of my favorite workouts of the year. And then here's the surprise. My family now, no joke. I guarantee you within a week or two, they'll, they'll text me. Hey, wh where are we going to do the workout? Hey, when are we going to do the workout? Hey, I can't wait for us to do the workout. It's now become something that family members who are not fitness fanatics, are looking forward to, to doing every single year. Like what a great way to positively influence your family. And I do make it enjoyable, right? So it's not like I'm trying to beat them up. Don't try and show off. I think that that's stupid. That's not very connecting, uh, but it's great. I have like an aunt. She's like, Hey, you know, when I come down for Thanksgiving, you know, I've been having that shoulder pain. Can you take me through some? And it's like, yeah, this is super great. Like, yeah, and it's show some great mobility. Stretches. It's super awesome. Which takes us to this next one. Um, mobility movements you could do anywhere, right? So like priming type movements. I love doing these after a meal because they allow me to do some kind of muscle contraction, bring the insulin levels uh, down, bring the sugar levels down. But also if you do priming, <coughs> you could do your priming movement and it also helps with digestion. A lot of priming involves the core, involves stability. And I noticed one of the worst things you could do, and the data supports this, is right after a meal, especially a big meal, nothing. One of the, I know that it feels like you want to do nothing, but one of the worst things you could do is eat a huge meal. And then what does everybody do? Gets on the couch, yep. plop Ma on the couch, maybe throw some alcohol at it. And then that's like, Oh, you're in for it. Right. One of the best things you could do is some movement. Now you don't want to do a full workout because that's gonna be tough after eating, you know, Thanksgiving dinner, but getting down on the floor and doing some priming movements, 15 minutes after your meal, that helps with digestion. And it feels good. It actually feels really good. It's one of my favorite things to do afterwards. So this was actually, so I told you we we do this walk and most of the families got onto it afterwards. Uh, a couple of family members were complaining about hip and low back pain. Oh, see, so perfect. this is how this actually, we and this was literally last year what ended up happening. We ended up all getting on the floor and me taking everybody through some 90-90 progressions for about 10, 15 minutes first to relieve everybody's hip and low back and everybody's like, Oh my God. So astonished. I'm like, yeah, then let's go for a walk afterwards. So that, that is like literally what we'll probably end up doing because mm. I got everybody, I can get everybody to do that. It's real easy for them to get on the floor like that. And they see the 
immediate benefits. Funny because a lot of them will feel that way because they've been sedentary all day, sitting on the couch, not doing anything. Then they went and fed themselves like crazy. And it's like, come on, we can we can do something right here. Let's get on the floor Plus, and that can it, show immediate relief. It feels really good. Like if you're a fitness fanatic, if you love it, uh, I mean, look, I don't have to sell this. You know this. One of your favorite things in, in life is to share this with the people you care about. And that's what ends up happening. You do this. Because I guarantee after you did that on the floor, what happened? People got up like, oh my God. Oh yeah. I feel so good. Yeah, yeah. And it's just do this more often. It's yeah. such a good feeling to be able to share that. Yeah. Um, and if now look, if you're a, a, a coach, an online coach, uh, you probably get some <laughs> clients out of this as well <laughs> with some of your distant family members that might want to uh, hire you. But um, it's a great thing to do after you eat. And again, I'll just to sell to the fitness fanatics. Uh, yeah, it'll help with blood sugar and all that stuff. But it's a very connecting way to to show your value to other people. So here's what we're doing because of the holiday season. What we did as a gift to our listeners is we took the programs that we feel are most appropriate for what we're talking about. So we have Maps Anywhere, where you work out anywhere. It's a band body weight workout. We have Maps Suspension, which is a suspension trainer program. We have Maps Prime, where they sh we show you priming movements, mobility movements, and then we threw in the No BS Six Pack Formula. It's a popular core training program that we threw in there. Now, if you were to get those all at retail, uh, it would be over $330, okay? So here's what we're doing, 70% off. So all of those are included in what we're gonna call the at-home holiday bundle, $99.99, uh, and you get all those programs included for life, so there you Smoking have it. Smoking deal. Yeah, yeah, pretty awesome. By the way, you can find that bundle at mapsnovember.com. Also, if you want free stuff, Go to mindpumpfree.com. we got a bunch of free guides there. And then finally, follow us on social media. Justin is on Instagram at mindpumpjustin. I'm at mindpumpdestefano. And Adam is at mindpumpadam.